we have been talking about the prophets and about their dual role here. One, they are announcing God's judgment against Israel, but number two, they're bearers of good news regarding his promises of mercy for the future. So those two roles are in evidence in Isaiah, really all over the book. Uh, but the first part of the book, it, it has much more of the judgment part of it. And the end of the book has much more of this announcement of future good news. So we're in that first part right now. We're in Isaiah 3. So we should expect there would be a lot of things here that are really about God's judgment against Israel. And we find that to be the case. So it says, Behold, behold the Lord God of hosts is taking away from Jerusalem and from Judah support and supply. What kind of support? What kind of supply? Well, food, water, but also people, mighty man, soldier, judge, prophet, diviner, elder, captain of 50, man of rank, counselor, skillful magician, expert in charm. So the spiritualists that they were counting on, those people were going to be gone as well as those that would have been protecting them. And they would end up being desperate for leaders uh, to rule over them. So here we get this desperate account here. It says, a man will take hold of his brother in the house of his father saying, you have a cloak, you shall be our leader. As if that's the only requirement. Uh, and this heap of ruins shall be under your rule. But no, what's the person going to say? No, I, I will not be a healer. In my house, there's neither bread nor cloak. You shall not make me leader over the people. They, they don't want to do it. It says, here's the reason why. Jerusalem has stumbled, the city of Jerusalem, which, and, and Judah has fallen because their speech and their deeds are against the Lord. So that's the conviction that comes from this prophet as prosecuting attorney. Now, in the midst of that, where's the hope? Well, here's one verse, one little verse in Isaiah 3. Tell the righteous that it shall be well with them, for they shall eat the fruit of their deeds. That's a great verse. The problem is, is can, can I actually be counted in the righteous, in this group called the righteous? I think the only way that you can be counted in that group is through one who has actually worked those deeds of righteousness for us, which is the Messiah who has now come. For us. So what about the wicked? Well, woe to the wicked. It shall be ill with them. For what his hands have dealt out shall be done to him. So we have the righteous and the wicked. And I want to be counted in with the righteous. And the, the way that I can do that uh, is through Jesus, through, through him as my substitute. So the chapter goes on to say, the Lord has taken his place to contend. He stands to judge peoples. The Lord will enter into judgment with the elders and princes of his people, right? And, and this includes not only the leading men, which we've mentioned already, but the rest of the chapter is about the women that maybe have benefited from the wickedness of those in charge. They, they have prosperity, but they are far from the Lord. It says, the Lord said, behold, the daughters of Zion are haughty, you know, they're proud. They walk with outstretched necks, glancing wantonly with their eyes, mincing along as they go, tinkling with their feet. They have diff different ornaments on their clothing. Therefore, the Lord will strike with a scab the heads of the daughters of Zion, and the Lord will lay bare their secret parts. So this is devastating prophecy of a, a coming exile, and that women who had maybe counted on not only their possessions, but also their spiritual objects, uh, the, the, the amulets that they had, as well as the, the, the garments that they have, their festal robes, all of that. But instead of perfume, there will be rottenness, it says. Instead of a belt, a rope. What kind of rope? The rope that actually has you entrapped as you're being led off into a foreign land. And instead of well-set hair, baldness. See, the shaving of the head, the humiliation of these once wealthy women. Instead of a rich robe, a skirt of sackcloth and braiding instead of beauty, branding rather, instead of, 
of beauty. So they're marked as the possessions of others. Your men shall fall by the sword and your mighty men in battle. And her gates shall lament and mourn. Empty she shall sit on the ground. So again, yeah, very strong in judgment. But we come back to that one verse of hope there for the righteous. And thinking about ourselves now as righteous through the merits and mediation of Christ. We're able to take this and tell the righteous that it will be well with them. It shall be well with them, for they shall eat the fruit of their deeds. Father, thank you that we have hope through the righteous man, Jesus Christ. And now we will be his glorious bride one day. Lord, help us to, to keep our eyes fixed on him who is our hope. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Blessings, friends.